Hello, I'm Bob Ross. I'd like to welcome you to the joy of painting. This is a one-hour instructional tape designed to take you step by step through a beautiful painting project. On this tape, we will paint a picture which has never been seen on the Joy of Painting television series, and we'll have sufficient time to demonstrate in detail the various steps and procedures used to create individual effects. Think of this tape as a private lesson in my studio, and I've reserved this front row seat just for you. To start off, I suggest you get a tall glass of iced tea, sit back, and view the tape in its entirety before you begin painting. This way, you will have a preconceived idea in your mind of how the painting progresses and how individual effects are achieved. If any procedure is unclear to you, you may run the tape back and see it again to see exactly how a particular effect was made. Pay close attention to the way tools are loaded to achieve certain effects. A great deal of the magic occurs right here on the palette. Take your time and work at your own pace. Speed will come with practice. This is the project we'll be painting today. I think you will find this painting fun as well as an excellent learning experience. I strongly suggest that you use this painting only as a guide and add your own ideas to it. We each see nature through different eyes and your painting should reflect your visions, your personality. Devote some time to practice and become familiar with each piece of equipment. And very soon, you too will experience the joy of painting. Before we get started, let's put a complete supply list on the screen, listing all the materials you need to paint this fantastic scene with me. Then I'll be back in just a second. Welcome back. Got all your materials out? Ready to do a fantastic painting with me? Good. Tell you what though, before we get started, let me take just a moment of your time and talk a little bit about the equipment that we're going to be using today. First of all, the main two brushes that we'll use. We have here a two inch and a one inch natural bristle brush. I know these may look like house painting brushes, but these are high quality artist brushes designed specifically for this technique. Don't confuse these with synthetic brushes such as nylon, polyester, and etc. It absolutely won't work. The painting knives that we'll be using. We'll use two different knives. We have a number 10 knife, which is the larger of the two, and a number 5 knife. It's basically the same knife, only smaller, and it allows you to get into to smaller areas and, and do detail work. With these knives, you can create unbelievable effects. You can paint mountains and trees and roads and stones, rocks, houses. It's, it's unreal what you can do with those son of a guns. We'll be using fan brush. This is a number six fan brush right here. Now this is a bristle fan brush. It's quite firm, has a lot of spring to it. It's not a soft little delicate brush. It's quite, quite stiff. With that, you can do such things as clouds, trees, waterfalls, a multitude of beautiful effects just using a fan brush. Also, in the way of brushes, we'll be using a number two script liner brush. 
Now this is the brush that we use to do fine detail and most important, this is the brush that we use to sign our completed painting. Some of the other things that we'll use, liquid white. Liquid white is a thin oil base coat. With this, we cover the canvas to make it wet, make it slick. It allows us to literally blend color right on the canvas rather than working ourselves to death on the palette. The paints that we use. The paints that we use are specifically designed for this technique of painting. They're much firmer and dry than normal paint. If you use a loose slippery paint, you're gonna, you're gonna end up being a mud mixer and you're gonna be upset with me. Purchase a paint that's designed for this specific technique. It needs to be firm and dry. I can't say that enough. Other pieces of equipment that will make your job easier. The palette that you use. I like a plexiglass palette and you need a palette that's big enough to give you sufficient work area when you're using big brushes. Because with a brush this big, you need a nice area to work in. If you've got a little teeny palette, you're going you're gonna to kill yourself trying to stay in this little area. Get you a nice big palette. It really will work fine. Plexiglass makes a good palette. Now, normally it's very clear. I've scuffed this one up so it doesn't shine on TV. But normally they're crystal clear. Okay. Also, another thing that will help you, because if you've watched the television series, you know I, I beat the brush against the leg of the easel and paint thinner goes everywhere. Can ruin a happy marriage in a heartbeat. This is called a brush beater rack, and it's just a little wire rack that goes in the bottom of a waste paper basket. And you shake the brush inside of the basket, then you beat the devil out of it right on these, right on these little wire things here, right across this rack. And it contains all of your brush cleaning procedure inside of the bucket. It'll keep you from <laughs> covering your whole room and getting everybody covered with paint thinner. I really think it's a good investment. Very cheap little thing. So I tell you what, let's take off and we'll get started here today. As we mentioned earlier, normally the first thing we always do is cover the entire canvas with a thin, even coat of the liquid white. So we'll just dip the old two inch brush right into the liquid white, about like so, and we can go right up here and begin covering the canvas. All we're looking for is just a nice, thin, even coat. Just really work it in. Just cover the canvas with it. Just cover the entire canvas. Probably the most common mistake made is applying too much of the liquid white. All you want is just enough to cover the entire canvas. If you think you may have a little too much liquid white, one of the easiest ways to make sure, clean and dry your brush, and then go back over the entire canvas with a clean, dry brush. That'll pick up any excess liquid white and your canvas will be just right then. Just right. Okay. Just really scrub that off. There we go. Okay. Now one thing that'll help, I use a, a canvas that's very smooth. Some people like canvas that has a little more tooth to it, a little more nap to it. I like a smooth canvas. But I also use a canvas that has a gray primer. And that way you can tell exactly where your liquid white is. Now, if you, if you don't have a canvas that has a gray primer, it's just a, a white primer, a little, a little trick that you can do is take a little bit of liquid black and just put a tiny little bit into your liquid white and it'll give it a, a gray cast. And then when you paint your white canvas, you can tell exactly where it's covered. Okay, long horizontal and vertical strokes, just to assure that you have a nice even coating of liquid white over the entire surface. And you're ready to go. And we can wash your brush. Now we wash our brushes with odorless paint thinner. And I really, really recommend you use odorless thinner. There's a screen down here in the bottom of this bucket. Scrub the bristles against the screen, the solid material settle to the bottom, and your paint thinner, it remains relatively clean. Shake off the excess, then... <laughs> and that's the fun part of this whole technique. Tell you what, let's make a happy little sky. And for that, I'm gonna go right into a touch of phthalo blue. Just a little bit, just pull a little bit of the color out and then tap the bristle, bristles firmly into the color. This will assure a nice, even distribution of paint all the way through the bristles. 
It does not take much color, just a little. Okay, let's go right up here. Now then, just using little crisscross strokes, begin laying in a basic sky. And start at the top and work downward. That way, that way your brush will pick up the liquid white and automatically, automatically, your color gets lighter toward the horizon. Let the canvas work, let the liquid white work, let your brush work. You just enjoy. You just enjoy. Because painting should make you happy. Should be a fun experience. And you can always add a little more color. Start with very little color. You can always go back and add a little more. That's, that's very simple. It's a son of a gun to try to take it off though. You can do it, but it's very difficult. Okay, and that quickly we've laid in a happy little sky. That easy. Okay, now then, while we have this brush dirty, let's have a little touch of water in this painting. I love water and it's always fun to do. So I'm gonna take, go right back into my Thalo Blue, reach right over here and grab a touch, just a touch of the Thalo Green. Don't need much of that. It's very strong. Just a touch. Thalo Blue and Thalo Green. And just tap it into the bristles again. Okay, now decide where you want the water to be and pull from the outside in. Start on the outside, pull in. Start on the bottom, work up so it gets lighter and lighter toward the horizon. Now see, if you start, if you start here and go over, it leaves a very distinct line which is hard to blend out. There we go, but you can if you, if you happen to forget. But blend from the outside in and leave a little air area open right in here. Look like a little sheen of light coming across the water when we're done. Start at the bottom, work upward, let it get lighter and lighter toward the top. Lighter and lighter. Just like so. There we go. See how easy that is? That's all there is to it. And then I have several brushes going. And you'll find that saves you a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of money and wasted paint if you have several brushes. If you have one for dark color and one for light, otherwise, your good paint's going to end up down here in this washer bucket. Okay, clean brush, and I'm just going to blend right across here, very lightly. I don't want to lose this light area, but I just want to bring it all together, just like so. Okay. That's ready, all fixed up. Now if you just have a tiny bit of paint on your brush, you can just wrap it like that and it takes, it'll take that paint off. Okay, let's use the fan brush today. We'll build a happy little cloud. Let's go right into titanium white. And I'm gonna reach down here, be right back, get the least little touch, a little bit more of the bright red. I wanna put a little sunlight in these clouds. I wanna make a happy little cloud today. Happy little cloud. Okay, decide where your cloud lives. Maybe he lives right in here. Take the corner of the brush and just make tiny little circles. Tiny little circles, round and around and around. Don't stay in one place and keep working. If you just stay in one place here and, and keep grinding the paint, you're gonna end up with big cotton balls up in the sky. Now you can also do this just as well with a one inch brush or, or two inch brush. Two inch brush makes fantastic clouds. Okay, now with a clean, dry, two-inch brush, use the top corner of the brush, and you want to blend just the base of these clouds out. Not touching the top yet, just blend. See, very lightly, very, very lightly. Just like so. Just barely, barely blending. Okay, now we're gonna fluff it. And this, we're gonna do a big circular pattern. Just grab it gently and fluff it upward. Just fluff it. And you're gonna pull up little stringy things when you do that. Don't worry about them, because when you go across, they just go away. And that easy. You have one beautiful little cloud. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll put another happy little cloud in here. Maybe this other cloud, maybe he lives right over here. Same thing, tiny little circles. And just drop him in wherever you think he should live. He lives right there. And in your world, you put a cloud where you want it. 
You don't necessarily need to put a cloud where I do. You put it where you think. If you think it lives somewhere else, then that's where it ought to be. There we go. Lift it gently, lift it, and very lightly just go across it. And that easy. We got another happy little cloud right there. Absolutely no problem. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off the old fan brush. Okay, I just have some paper towels over here that I clean the brushes on. Okay. Wipe it off and we're in business. Let's build, maybe we back in here, there's just a small little mountain that lives. So let's take a touch of Prussian blue, a little bit of uh, midnight black. We're gonna get a little touch of alizarin crimson. So we got blue, black, alizarin crimson, maybe even a little Van Dyke brown, what the heck? What the heck, just drop it in, dark colors. Okay, pull the paint out as flat as you can get it. Just really mash down hard. Then take your knife and cut across. See there, get that little roll of paint. This knife has a straight edge on it. And by having a straight edge, it's very easy to load it. It's going up here. Okay. And then maybe, maybe our little mountain. Okay, I gotta make a big decision here. Maybe he lives right here, just floats around in the clouds. Push very firmly, very firmly. We're trying to push this color right into the fabric. And you just decide where you want little bumps to live. See, there's one. Wherever, wherever you want them. Maybe there's a happy little thing lives right there. Scrape off all the excess paint. Just really get in there and scrape hard. You can't hurt this, just scrape it off. The only thing we're worried about is this nice outside edge. In here, we could care less. Now then, with a two inch brush, I wanna grab this. And because of the liquid white, the canvas is wet, you can pull this and move it. And just move it, remember? If you can see the entire mountain, it's always more distinct at the top than it is at the bottom. And by doing this, that will happen automatically. Just like so. See, just let it sort of float off in the sky there. There we go. Because this is a very firm paint, you can blend right over it. Okay, now then, maybe there's some, maybe there's some snow on that little mountain. So we can take some titanium white and once again, pull it out as flat as you can get it. Just really pull it out. Then go across. Get that little roll of paint. See, there he is. Tiny little roll of paint. Let's go up here. Okay, now then, right along in here. Take the point of the knife, put it right up at the top of the mountain. No pressure. Just let it float. Just let it float right down the side of the mountain there. No pressure. See, follow the angles in the mountain. Absolutely no pressure. Okay, maybe right here. Think where light would strike. Think where the sun would shine through here and create all these beautiful little effects. And if you're right-handed, it's normally easier for the light to come from the right side. Normally easier. See, very delicate touch though. Very delicate. Very, very delicate. This is a time when the little knife would come in even better. So you can get back here with a little knife and get these little places. That little son of a gun just sneaks right in there. Either knife works very well. They both have the, the straight edges and they work very good. Take a little bit of blue and white. This is a little phthalo blue. Just a touch. Just a touch. Mix it up about like so. That's good. Cut across and once again we have that small roll of paint right out on the edge of the knife. So you can see it's right on the end. There you go. Now then, decide which peaks of others to weigh. If this one's in the background, put a shadow behind this one first. Just a little tiny shadow. Then a shadow here. Let it come down distinctly through. See there? Distinctly through. 
No pressure at all. Think in your mind that the only thing touching the canvas is that little tiny roll of paint. And each little highlight needs a shadow. If it doesn't have a shadow, it won't come out and play with you. It'll just leave you. Just leave you stranded. Hang okay, down then. Sometimes it's fun to play some games. All right, clean dry brush. I'm gonna tap the base of this following the angles. I wanna create mist. Now lift upward very softly. Three hairs and some air over here. Follow these angles. Lift, lift, blend. See, it just softens that son of a gun right down there. Okay, now then. Maybe, so you can change your mind. Now maybe there's a, a peak that lives right here. If we want to make this one look like it's in front of that by diffusing that first and then bringing a line distinctly down, it'll push all that back. But that little misty area is the only thing that separates those. So cherish it. It's your good friend. Maybe this, shoot, look here. You can take this anywhere you want it to go. Anywhere you want it to go. But notice all the angles of highlight or light color are in the same basic direction same basic direction because light's only going to strike at a given angle coming through here. Sing! Pretend you're a sunbeam just wandering around here and having fun. Okay, now we need a shadow back here. Everywhere there's a highlight we have to have a shadow. Just a little shadow. Just a little happy shadow that lives right back here. See how that pops right out? Comes your friend. It's easy. Just a few little rules. Mountains are just geometric shapes. Highlights and shadows. And you can make some of the most fantastic mountains you've ever seen. What's great, great for practice and get to give you experience is just take a canvas and start at the top, paint mountains from top to bottom. And you'll learn more. Oh, it's, it's a super way to practice. And by the time you're finished, you'll be good friends with the knife. Okay, tapping the base, following those angles again. Now, you want to save that one line right there. That's a distinct line that separates these two entities. Save that. Lift upward, very gently. Whisper light. You don't want to destroy, you just want to diffuse. Over here, follow these angles. Save this line. That's a distinct line that you need. Give it a little blend. And you've got one very effective, yet very easy, little mountain. And I knew you could do it. Tell you what, let's have some little footy hills that live right in here. For that, let's mix up some color. Shoot, we'll take, we had this mountain color. That was just some Prussian blue and some midnight black. We'll put some Van Dyke brown, lizard crimson. Just a little touch of sap green. Don't want too much sap green. I'm going to reach over here and find some white. And let's see what we got here. you got to put a little white with it to know what you have. It's very difficult to tell. A little more blue in there. Oh, yeah. Just sort of play with the color till it gets like you want it. I'm looking for a color that sort of a bluish gray, maybe with the least little hint of green. It's too far away to have much green. Okay, now we can lift it up, like so. Okay, let me clean the knife. And today, I'll tell you what, let's do. Let's use a one inch brush, and I'll just go right into that, and just pull it through, just to load a little paint on it. Like so, just like so. Okay, let's go up to the canvas. Now you have to make a big decision here. Where does your little foothills live? Maybe, let's start right in here. Maybe just using the corner of the brush. Maybe they just come right down. Here they come. Wherever you want them. And just sort of sort of pull it straight down. See? Turn it over and use the other corner. If one gets gets empty, you can turn it over. Just pull straight down. But very important here. See this little misty area right in here? You want to save that mist that's between the foothill and the mountain. If you, 
if you kill that misty area, these foothills are going to look like they're right up against the mountain, and you don't want that. Okay. Now then, time to wash your brush. I've put off washing the brushes till I'm about to run out. Give them a good shake. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Now, I want to create mist at the base of this foothill. So here, all we're going to do, and pay attention, pay attention here to the angles. This foothill is going to sort of be coming down this way. Just like so. There we go. See how soft that makes the base of that little sign I've got to look? And give it gentle little upward lifts. Gentle, gentle, gentle. All right. Now then, maybe we'll put one coming down this way. Same color, only darker. Same color, only darker. So, as things get closer to you in the landscape, they should get darker in value. Little darker in value as they get closer. And you just mix these colors on your brush. Shoot, no big deal. A little green in there. Not much green, it's too far away, okay? Now maybe, maybe this one lives right along in here somewhere. There he goes. There he goes. See, this one's a little darker, so it'll stand out. Now sometimes you want to make something that looks like a little individual trees. You can just take a brush and turn it on the end, see? Pull down, and it makes a little more distinct things depending on the effect that you want to achieve. Maybe this comes right on down. You just sort of have to make a big decision and decide where it lives. Look at there. It's that easy, though. And I'll show you, show you something that's fun here. Maybe you decide in here, maybe there's a little separation and this one comes right on down here. See, you can, you can sort of pull them apart and make more than one that easy. And you just take them wherever you want them to go. Isn't that a super way, though, just to make some, some happy little foothills that live back here in the distance? Maybe over here this one comes up a little. I don't know. Whatever you think. Whatever you think. You just put them in. Okay, now then, with our two inch brush, still paying attention to the lay of the land, we can sort of begin tapping this, just wherever you think it should go. There. Don't want to destroy this little line though, if we're going to keep that in, we'll go in between there and just tap with the corner of the brush to soften. Like so. Okay, then short little strokes, lift straight up. Even if this comes down the hill, lift it straight up. Straight up, straight up, straight up. Always. If you lean it to the side and lift, it'll look like a little tree's far away. Look like the wind's blowing a thousand miles an hour and about to blow them away. There, straight up. There we go. And then very lightly, just blend it. But isn't that one super way to make some happy little foothills? And they're that easy. That easy. Tell you what, let's do. Let me find, uh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Can't find my brush, you know. When you get old, the mind's the second thing to go. Okay, we'll take some of that dark color. We'll use some black, some blue. I want this to be very, very dark. Black and blue, we'll get some little brown, little sap green. This should look black. It should be so dark. Now pull this brush through the paint, and as you pull it through, wiggle it. See? Wiggle it. And then sharpen it. That'll bring the brush to a super sharp chisel edge. Super sharp edge. There you can see it. It's very sharp. And the only reason it's sharp is because you have so much paint in there, it's literally just stuck the bristles together. Okay, now then, maybe back in here, Way back in the distance, there's some little evergreens that live. 
Now the only way to make these show is to save this little misty area. So touch it with this, that nice chisel edge. See here? Don't kill that little misty area that's in between. And every so often reload your brush to bring it back to a nice sharp edge. And you can begin dropping in all kinds of just happy little distant trees. We're not looking for distinct shape yet. They're too far away still. Too far away. When they get closer, then we'll worry about individual shapes. Right now, all we're trying to do, there, just, just sort of tap. Hmm, isn't that fun? It's a super little way to make a lot of trees. Now, if you get them too far apart, if you, let's just do some here. See, if you put them like this, they're very rapidly going to look like telephone poles or fence posts. If that happens, just put some more in there. Just means you don't have quite enough. Not quite enough. There we go. So reload your brush frequently. And maybe as they wander out here, they get a little bit bigger. And by making them bigger out here and smaller toward the center, it'll create the illusion of a little pond here. You'll see what I mean in just a second. But sort of let them get bigger toward the outside edges, and it makes a wonderful effect. A wonderful effect. It'll make you happy. And if you're interested in selling paintings, hmm, that's what'll sell them. Okay, now it doesn't matter if a little bit of that color comes down because we're going to have water, so this will just end up being just happy little reflections. There we go. But now, one of the things when you're painting, the more planes you have in a painting, the more depth, the more distance that you'll have. Your painting will look deeper. So come right up here a minute, look, look up close. Let me show you. Look at all the planes that we have here. This one right here, where these dark trees, and then this, and this one, another one, and then you have several different planes in the mountain. Now, if you can zoom back a little bit and take a look, see, when you look at all these planes independently, look at the, right there, look at the depth that's in that already. And it's caused only because of all of these various planes in your painting. And that's, that's what'll, <laughs> that's what'll make a happy bug. Now then, let's create some reflections right here. Let's take a two inch brush, decide where you want reflections to be, grab and pull straight down. Because these trees are short, just have short reflections here as you work outward. Let them get a little longer. Trees are a little taller, reflections are a little longer. See there? Go out the other way, just pull straight down though. Straight down. Straight down. Isn't that a super easy, nice way to make fantastic reflections? And you can do it. You can do it. And very lightly, very lightly. Come straight across. And instant reflection. I'll show you another little trick. This is fun. Maybe you want to create another plane in here. You can do that simply by just taking a little, doesn't matter as long as it's a light color. We just whatever happens to be on the palette. Now watch right in here. Maybe you want to show a little, another little plane. Touch here with a fan brush and lift upward. It'll make it look like little tree trunks far away but it also begins creating the illusion of another plane in the painting. See it? Looks like a little bank back here. And it also looks like little tree trunks. Hundreds of little tree trunks. Isn't that sneaky? And the more of these you put in, the better it'll look. The more planes that you have in your painting. Now if you get one here that you don't like or it's too bright, all you have to do is work it in. And all that dark color back there will eat it up. Let's build a little water line. For that, I'm going to take a touch of the liquid white and put it on my palette. Just pull it out and then lightly cut across. That's all there is to it. See, there's a little bit of paint right up on the top here. Okay, now go up here, use a firm pressure, and all we're going to do is just cut in a water line. Use a firm, keep these lines basically straight basically straight. 
See there? Just cut in a happy little waterline. Wherever you think they should be. Wherever they should be. There we go. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that super? And you can do it. You can do it. See now a few little ripples here and there on the water. They too need to be straight. If they're not straight, the water look like it's going to run right out of your painting. Cause you a lot of problems. Okay. Tell you what. Tell you what. Let's do. Let's begin putting some foreground in here. Let's take a big bunch of the Prussian blue, black, brown, oh, I don't know, crimson, sap green, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Whatever you have, shoot, just drop it in there. Dark colors, dark colors. Look at that. Might as well mix up a big water paint. Okay, let me clean off my knife. Today, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, let's do. Let's use, shoot, we'll just use an old two inch brush. You could. You could do this with a fan brush, a uh, one inch brush, it doesn't matter. I'll use a two inch today. Pull it through the paint, wiggling it. See, wiggle it. Other side, pull it through and wiggle it. You need a lot of paint in the bristles, just like with a one inch brush, to bring it to a nice sharp chisel edge. Wiggle it, that loads the brushes, the bristles, I mean, loads the bristles. And by wiggling it and pulling it, it pulls the paint toward the end of the bristles and sharpen it, just like you would a knife. Okay, look at how sharp it is. Boy, that son of a gun is just, you could shave with it. Look at that, super sharp. Now then, <clears throat> let's decide. Maybe there's a happy tree, evergreen tree. He lives right there. Start with just touching the canvas. Use just the corner of the brush, just the corner and begin pushing, making the bristles bend slightly downward. See there? Look at that. Isn't that a nice little tree? And he lives right here in this brush. All you have to do is sort of push him out. Each time you start a new evergreen, reload the brush to a nice sharp chisel edge. Go through the same procedure. Let's have another one. Maybe he lives soup, right there. Just make a decision and drop him in wherever you want him. There he goes. There he goes. One of the questions I get asked quite frequently, what if I do a tree and decide I don't like him? Or maybe I'll make him taller. Watch here. Watch here. Let's say, well I hate to mess up his tree, but I, mean, I want to show you this. It's a good tree. Maybe you want to make his tree taller. All you have to do is touch and come right back over the top of him. See here? And you just paint a bigger tree right over the top. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. And you have a brand new, beautiful tree that easy. Tell you what, let's do. Let's have a tree on the other side too. Bring the brush back to a chisel edge. Nice and sharp, okay? And maybe this tree, this old tree, maybe he goes almost all the way to the top of the canvas. Same way. This will give you some practice using a big brush, making some beautiful little evergreens. This might be my favorite brush to do this with. It's so much fun. So, so often we avoid this brush because it's big, but it'll do some of the most beautiful little delicate things. Just, you're pushing downward with the corner of the brush, just the corner, just the corner. As you work down the tree, you push harder and harder, so you're actually using more of the brush. But just the corner and push down. See, down. I'm exaggerating now so you can see down, like that. Okay? Now then, maybe we'll have some leaf trees in there. So pull the brush in one direction through the paint, one direction. Load it full of color, one direction. This is the same old dark color. Really pull it, pull it. By pulling it in one direction, it'll generate a, a round corner. See, you pull it, and then that corner is round. 
when we touch the canvas, we want that rounded corner toward the top. Let's go right up here. <clears throat> Maybe right here lives a nice tree. A nice tree lives there. Just push, bend the bristles upward. That rounded corner was toward the top. Just push and bend it upward. Okay, you have to make some decisions now. Where does this live? Let's see, it comes right out here. Right out here, like so. Whatever, whatever. This is it's your world. You make the big decision, throw it in. Hmm, that was so much fun. Let's go over here. Maybe on this side, maybe there's a tree lives right in here. See, we don't have to separate these yet. We separate them with highlights. Right now, all we need are just basic shapes. See, just push, bend that brush up. And when you do it, don't let the brush slide like that. See the difference? You get those, makes good swamp grass. We're not after that right now. Just push. There we are. And you just, wherever you want them. You can begin filling all that in. See, good place to practice bushes and stuff right in here. Excellent, excellent place to practice. And we've got, got all that color blocked in, that easy. Maybe nice individual bush lives right there. Okay, now then, let's make a few tree trunks here and there. And to do that, we'll take a little of the dark sienna, a little Van Dyke brown, and some white. Just pull it out very flat. Don't overmix. Leave it, leave it marble like that. Cut across. Get that little roll of paint. All those various colors will be in that little roll out here. It's all there. See there? Okay. Now then, we'll go right up in here. Just touch. Allow the canvas to pull off what it wants. Give it just a least little pull to the side. And you can put in just a happy little tree trunk wherever you want them. That easy. Maybe in this big tree over here. Here's a little trunk. And you don't have to show the entire trunk because the leaves are going to cover up places. You won't see all of it. Okay, maybe in this tr old tree here, there's a trunk lives. Wherever you want them. Wherever you want them. Another thing, just take a clean knife and scratch through the paint. See, it makes it look like all kinds of little delicate sticks and twigs and people will think you work for weeks doing this with a little one hairy brush. See, if you want them to be wider, stronger, turn the knife and they'll get thicker. And you can put limbs on trees or whatever you want just doing this. Most of these will be covered up, as I say. Put a few on the other side over here. Just here and there. Okay. Now then, over here, let's have some reflections. So take the big brush, decide where you want reflections and, and land to meet. Grab and just pull it straight down. Straight down. The liquid white is still wet. It stays wet for several days on a good canvas. And the paint will move. And you can turn what was land right into reflections. That easy. Then go lightly across. Okay, let me grab an old one inch brush here. Now then, let's begin putting some highlights in all these things. I'm gonna go right into a touch of the liquid white into yellow. Okay, I'd yellow, I'm gonna reach up here, be right back, get a little sap green. Maybe add a little black, dull it down some. There, you could just use black and yellow, makes a beautiful green. I'm looking for a dark green color here. Dark green color. Bring it brush back to a nice, sharp, sharp edge. See there? Very sharp. Okay. Now then, I want to highlight these big evergreens using just the corner of the brush. Just sneak in here and put all kinds of little highlights. Don't kill all your dark areas though. Evergreens are usually quite dark. So try not to kill all those dark areas. They're they're important, 
especially in evergreens. Okay, a little bit out here on this one. Don't want him left out. That easy. That easy. Okay, let's go over here to this other evergreen. While we're in the evergreen business, shoot, might as well get them all. See there? Just basically using just the corner of the brush though, and not a great deal of pressure. If your paint won't come off your brush, add the least little touch, least little touch of paint thinner. That'll loosen the paint up and allow it to, to come off easier. Thin paint will stick to a thick paint. Okay. And then we'll wash that brush off real quick. Give them a good shake, and off we go. Now we can begin working on these leaf trees. Back into the liquid white. And let's go right through some yellow and just a touch of green. I want this to be a nice shiny green. Now in your world, you make it whatever color you want, okay? Just want to show you how to create the effects. Pull that brush in one direction and get it full of paint. There's a lot of paint in there. The secret to this is to have a lot of paint so you just have to barely touch the canvas. If you have to hit the canvas firmly or hard, then it's going to smudge. We pulled it in one direction, it, it rounds one corner. Look right up here. You can see how it's round on that corner. With that rounded corner to the top, take Go slightly above the dark, give it the least little touch, and just push slightly upward. You're just barely bending the bristles. It's a delicate little touch, no pressure. And then work in layers, working downward. See there? There we go. Down, down. Just decide where your tree lives and, and paint him in. That's all you have to do. Think about limbs that are projecting towards you. They're not just all going out the sides. And don't just hit it random. Look at it. Get, get a feel for it. One of the best things you can do is, is take some time and, and go out in your yard or go out in the woods and, and study trees. Make friends with a tree. Talk to him. Then you'll get to understand him. Look at what makes a tree look round. What gives it what gives it personality. I'm going to get a touch of paint thinner on my brush just to thin the paint a little bit. Okay, maybe right in here now. It's a happy little bush it lives. Right there. Very little pressure. Very, very little pressure. Mm. Then a pretty little sudden again. Add a little yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow. Here and there a little touch of bright red. Just sort of mix color on the brush. Shoot for maybe, maybe back here. Ooh, there's a nice one. There's a nice one. You ought to be able to really see him. Little fireball. Nice little bright one, and a happy one. Maybe there's one that lives in front of him, pushes him back. Do the bush that in your mind is the father's to weigh. Do him first. Okay, now you can use the side of the brush and just push upward. See, make all kinds of happy little grassy areas. Look at that. Then a super, super way to create all kinds of little bushes. Work in layers here though. And notice there's a dark area. See the little dark area between each layer? That's the only thing that separates your bushes. Don't kill that, it's your, it's your good friend. Keep the camera right here and let me show you. You can take the knife and come right back in here and in these dark areas, scratch in little sticks, J just in the dark areas though. And it'll help create depth in your painting. Can you see those? See? And it gives little sticks and twigs, it holds all these little bushes up. Looks like a lot of detail. And you haven't worked very hard. You hadn't hardly worked at all. But don't tell nobody that. That's our secret, okay? See? Painting's fun should always make you happy. Put a little, little more color on the brush. And maybe, let's do this one right back here. Here's a happy little bush. He lives right there. Got a little arm that comes out through there. Make up little stories. Talk to the, 
talk to your canvas. Shoot, people expect us painters to be half crazy. It's all right. You can get away with it. Okay. Indian yellow, yellow ochre. Put, let's put some bright red in there too. What the heck? Now, as I mentioned earlier, when you're doing this at home, you use the colors that make you happy. I want, I want to use colors here that are bright enough that you can see them and you can distinguish how they're made. There we go. Because very soon, very soon, how to paint will become easy. What's going to be hard is what to paint. That becomes the challenge. One thing that will help you there, we have all kinds of instructional books. And there's a book for each television series. And each book contains 13 paintings with detailed instructions and just hundreds and hundreds of how-to pictures. It'll give you a lot of ideas of things to paint. And with what you've learned here, you shouldn't have any trouble at all. Any trouble at all. Or if you'd like, we have instructors that travel all over the country. We have certified instructors that I personally have taught and trained and that we guarantee. And these instructors travel all over the country teaching hundreds and hundreds of people the joy of painting. If you'd like to have an instructor in your area, let us know. Or let your local art shop know. Okay. There. Maybe. Yep, there's one. But do one bush at a time. One bush at a time. Just one at a time. Here's one. See that little rascal? You're looking for that little lacy effect. Should you get a bush that you don't like, just take your knife, scrape it right off, just to a bushectomy. Scrape that little rascal off, put your dark color back in, and you can do it right over the top. No problem. No problem at all. Because if you're not happy with something, then you ought to change it. There we go. There's another little bush lives right there. And maybe. Ooh, there's a bright little rascal. Isn't it pretty? That really stands up nice. Tell you what, before we get too far along, let me see. We'll use a little small knife. It's fun for getting in here. Maybe you want to have, maybe back in here it lives, maybe there's a, a big rock, a big stone. Ah, oh, there he is. Just use some Van Dyke Brown, a little dark sienna on it. See, paint a big old happy rock, and then we can take some, oh, we can take some brown and some white, whatever color rock you want. Okay, still using the small knife, and just reach up in here, just like you were doing a little mountain, just let this bounce along, and put some highlight on that rock. Isn't that a pretty little rock? See there? And he lives out here amongst all these bushes and trees. And rocks are just baby mountains with proper care and nutrition. Shoot, they'll grow up and be a big mountain too. Shoot, tell you what, all we got brown going here. Maybe over on this side, let's put in a little bit of land. We don't want all these bushes to to fall off in the water. We'll give him some. We'll give him something for his little foots to stand down here. Van Dyke brown, just like so. And we can use some brown. Shoot, a little touch of blue even in there. Graze it. Okay. Brown, white, touch of blue. Just let that sort of bounce along. Make some nice high. Look like dirts and rock, stones. Okay. If you want to make it shine a little more, you can take a little lighter color and just barely graze here and there. Just barely. That'll make it jump right out at you. Mm. Now then, with a the one-inch brush, see this is a very straight edge here. You can take and just pop in a little bush. Look at there. See? And that sort of pushes that back. Just here and there. Just a happy little bush wherever you think they should live. Okay. Back into our color. And let's put in a little bush or two right around here. See, right around the rock. One thing I'd like to mention, if you've enjoyed painting along with me on this instructional videotape, we have numerous other tapes by myself 
and a lot of other fantastic painters in, in just about every medium you can think of. If you'd like, if you'd like a free color brochure showing a lot of the tapes that we have, drop me a line. We'll be glad to send you one. Give you an idea of some of the beautiful, beautiful projects you can do in the comfort of your home with videotape. Okay, now I'm going to take just a clean knife and I'm going to go up in here and here and there I'm going to just scratch in just some sticks and some twigs wherever you think they should live. Wherever you want them. Okay, a little bit of liquid white. And we can go under this area here of dirt and land and just cut in a water line, same way as we did in the back, keeping it basically straight, basically straight, like so, like so. So you can go anywhere you want to go here, but you want to keep these lines as straight as you can. There. Okay, maybe there's a happy little ripple lives out here. This too should be straight. Tell you what, let me get the liner brush. I'm going to put paint thinner on it. Paint thinner. Let's go right up here in the brown. You want this to be as thin as ink. This is paint thinner, little Van Dyke brown. Turn that brush. Turn it. It brings it to a sharp, nice sharp point. See? Okay, let's go up here. Now, this is a thin, thin paint. Maybe in here it lives a little stick or twig. Right there, right here. And this paint is thin, it will flow. It will literally flow right off your brush. If your paint won't flow, then it's probably not thin enough. Add a little more paint thinner to it. Sometimes I use a thin oil. That'll work quite nicely too. See, and you got an old stick that lives there and he's got a friend that lives over here. It's always old sticks in the woods. And it adds little details to your painting. Okay, while I have, while I have the liner brush, I'm gonna go right into paint thinner and right into the bright red. And now we'll do the most important part of the painting. Thin the paint once again until it's consistency of ink. Load the brush full. And let's go right down in here and sign our painting, just like so. And this thin paint will flow. See? There we go. And I hope you've enjoyed this painting. It's a lot of fun. It'll teach you how to use the equipment. And it's very, very rewarding. And I, I look forward to painting with you again on other instructional videos. And until then, from all of us here, happy painting and God bless.